Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. That's what we're here to talk about. Lindsay, mm-hmm. myself, Dan, Chase, and Dave. And so right off the bat, we, uh, Mike led us into this thinking yesterday, you know, based on what we're seeing in Romans, how they knew, you know, they were preaching the gospel from the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And when you translate that now, a lot of times people will do their, you know, you you do this Bible reading plan, everyone starts on January 1st, and then you get into like Numbers and Leviticus and all this kind of stuff, and people tend to quit or really struggle, or it's like, whoa, I'm reading some crazy section of the Does scripture. it even matter? Does it even apply? Do I have to know this stuff? Exactly. And so can we understand the gospel without understanding the Old Testament? Yeah. Even, even before that question, I was talking to you guys um, about how <laughs> in the first six verses of Romans chapter 1, Paul just like breezes by these huge theological statements Mm -hmm. that he is assuming the church in Rome is going to understand. Mm -hmm. Like here we, and necessarily so this is a good thing, but yesterday Pastor Mike spent almost 40 minutes diving in, just kind of trying to make some sense and introduce some of those concepts. Mm -hmm. And Paul, when he ships off this letter, is just like, oh yeah, you guys know that I was, you know, sent out and called out beforehand and, you know, that Jesus was from David and he's a descendant, obviously, if you read the Old Testament and he's He's also a son of God. He's a son of God, no big Mm -hmm. deal. And he rose right. He just assumes that the hearer and the readers are going to know the Old Testament scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so in one sense, there's an exhortation where it's like, oh man, yeah, if, if, if you are a Christian and you're a follower of Jesus, it is good and even necessary to continue to become familiar Mm -hmm. with the Old Testament scriptures, not just the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Now, to your question, what was it specifically? Do you have to? Yeah, I think think if you would ask most people, do I know what the gospel is, I think they would say yes in in the church. And if you ask most people if they have like a really good understanding of the Old Testament, they'd be like, oh, not so much. Mm -hmm. And so how can we kind of reconcile those two based on the experience of these first century Christians who seem to be able to hear and believe the gospel based on the Old Testament, like this was the Bible they had and so on and so forth, you know. Um, It certainly seems like a call not to neglect the Old Testament, Mm -hmm. for sure. And still we have the New Testament. So, you know, maybe just talking a little bit more about how those two relate to each other and and how we can be using the Old Testament even today. There are two places... um, where in the New Testament, New Testament writers make a distinction, at least, that kind of mind between Old Testament and New Testament. And, and Peter, he likens Paul's writing to the same level of um, sacred writings as the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So he's affirming the New Testament's value and it being scripture. Mm-hmm. And in Hebrews, actually, it talks about that long ago we heard from the prophets mm-hmm. and um, you know, you have the church fathers, the law, et cetera. Now, our, you know, we hear from the Lord Jesus himself. Mm-hmm. This comes through the apostles and, and sent out ones and stuff like that. So there is obviously a distinction. And uh, what, what's the, who, who was it? Ag- was it Augustine? Mike would definitely know this. Shout out to Mike, <laughs> we miss you. Um, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Mm. And so they're both necessary and you can obviously know the gospel mm-hmm. if you only read the New Testament scriptures. Right. Sure. But there is so much beauty and depth and awe and value and principles and promises and commands that come from the Old Testament. And so it's just, you can't separate the two. And so, you know, you were even mentioning, Lindsay, like, well, mm-hmm. what about the person who comes in and hears all these things about the Old Testament, or they're a new Christian, or maybe they, you know, they haven't been to Bible school or seminary, and they're like, well, it's just kind of overwhelming. We've talked about this with the practices. We, we had a mm-hmm. workshop on Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's like you can have this stumbling block where you come and, you're, and you think, oh, there's so much to know and do. Mm-hmm. How do I even start? And is it even worth starting? Is ignorance just bliss here? And you can have the same kind of mentality with something as massive and a hard and confusing and intimidating as the Old Testament. But it is still a valuable, worthy endeavor. And I think that's actually what, what one of the Paul's points is here. I mean, again, he does not take time to explain all of these theological statements. Mm-hmm. He just assumes the hearer knows. And so I think that would be a good encouragement for people to dive into the value 
of the Old Testament. Yeah. I've heard the, uh, I think it was B.B. Warfield, I think, said that the Old Testament is like a room that is fully furnished with the lights off. And then the New Testament, like, turns on the light. And mm-hmm. you can kind of, like, see some things. Like, but you can still, you know, it's not pitch black in there. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah. with some light, you can kind of, like, make out some things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yep. the New Testament. All the light. pieces are there. Right. And if you can see them. Right. right. And then when Same you have this reveal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when the New Testament is, you're like, oh, yeah. Okay. I see a lot of that. And mm-hmm. That's Luke 24. Where Jesus is walking with the people who don't recognize him after mm-hmm. he's resurrected from the dead on the way to go see the disciples. And he opens their eyes, and, and they begin to see right. that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, the prophets, and the writings. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden, it just like clicks. Right. And, and, that, and yeah, and that is a big thing too. Like, you know, Paul definitely had the Old Testament, but he also had like Jesus, and he also had like right. mm-hmm. Jesus right. had to teach these people. Like, no, this is actually what it means. Right. Exactly. So it's like he didn't just have the Old Testament, although he did. And you know, he had the new understanding with the Old Testament. And he was right. reading through the Old Testament. And then that's when you get like the book of Hebrews, for instance, or yep. something where they're like, oh, okay, because of Jesus, we got this stuff. So Jesus definitely makes it very clear. It's not just like, you know, so don't mm-hmm. be, don't be, yeah. don't be afraid about the Old right. Testament with that in that sense that like, feel free to use them both together, of course. Mm-hmm. And obviously. now you have your lens. You know how, when you go back, yes. you yes. know what you're looking for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Don't need to be guilty about being, you know, swallowed up by the Old Testament. You just be like, well, it's just. Just read it and mm-hmm. keep in mind the New Testament while you're at it. <laughs> yep. So maybe really simple, helpful steps for somebody who wants to start getting involved and becoming more familiar with the Old Testament scriptures. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of amazing resources out there. I mean, we, we use and talk about the Bible Project a ton, mm-hmm. but the Bible Project is amazing. Actually, there is a read the Bible in a year plan. You don't have to just be in January to start those types of plans. Mm-hmm. That's connected with the Bible Project that has these five to eight minute devotionals almost every single day that are videos from the Bible Project in the front end that explain big themes, uh, Hebrew words that are very, very important, the Torah, they give overviews of all the books of the Bible. And they are so helpful because yeah. they are using the lens of connecting Jesus as the key figure and the key piece in every single thing. Yep. And so even, I mean, my goodness, even if like you're like wanting to start family worship and you're like, well, what do I do? It, it's, it's beautiful. It's engaging enough that even children can understand and participate. And it's deep enough that people who are seasoned in their faith can continue to learn and grow. So it's on YouTube um, or you can go to their actual website. But I would check out the Bible Project as just a way to get introduced. And then you can, you can grow from there. Yeah, sure. yeah and be encouraged because I know students and also um, our Gospel Project, cur- did I say that right? Yeah, Gospel Project curriculum, it is, that's the whole point of it. Mm-hmm. So, like, when we're in the New Testament and we're learning about the church getting started, it's all about how all those prophecies from the Old Testament right. saying that all these people from all nations would come into the church, and it's telling us how the Holy Spirit was working to bring in the Gentiles. Yeah. So it totally brings that all together mm-hmm. so the kids are seeing that. Yeah. To, to ignore the context, because, you know, Mike, you know, the, what is the context for the gospel? It's the Old Testament prophets. And so to just ignore the context because, like, the quote-unquote lead character isn't in that part of the story, right. like, oversimplifies the story. You think of any, like, you know, if you're watching, like, a movie trilogy or something like that or, like, you know, something that... You know, people always say, well, it, it starts slow and then it gets better or, or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying that about the Old Testament, but like the story is unfolding. Right. You know, and to understand, you know, Jesus coming in the New Testament, he comes into the world of the Old Testament, the yeah. world mm-hmm. that the Old Testament built. That is the context of the story. And so it's almost like, you know, to say, well, you know, the main character, quote unquote, isn't in the Old Testament, literally, just means, well, that must just n- not be part of the story. And it's like, well, n- no stories, you know, start out that way and, and we get the proper context that way. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I don't know if I'm saying that. You right, have to you ask. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll have to ask my, my family and friends. Uh, who I will, will regularly watch movies with, but I'm pretty sure I'm the most annoying person to watch a movie with. Actually, that's not true. People who talk during movies, they're, that's the, you're, you're the annoying one. <clears throat> Is that you? <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. Because you miss stuff. You depends. miss stuff. So have you ever watched and again, pause? Hello. Well, pause. What, <laughs> what is this a pausing party or a watching party? Anyways, here Both. it's like if I if I'm watching a movie that mm-hmm. I've already seen that I love and I'm now watching with somebody who hasn't seen it yet, mm-hmm. 
and like I know parts coming up, and so I'm just kinda, like a really important phrase. Mm-hmm. So I'll just kind of like you know, and I'm they're on lo- their phone, and they're on their phone, <laughs> or or they they get up to, or they get up to go to the bathroom. They're like, oh, you don't have to pause it. Yeah. I'm like, no, you're going to miss it. Right. And it seems so insignificant at first, you know, all that type of stuff where it's not important or, or maybe it's boring or it doesn't mm-hmm. cause mm-hmm. awe and wonder. That's kind of like this. It's like mm-hmm. you you don't want to miss the beauty because it's revealing who God is. It's mm-hmm. revealing who you are. Yes. Now, rightly so, there should be a, an emphasis on the New Testament. I mean, literally in the words, Old Testament, New Testament. Testament comes from the Latin word testamentum, which means covenant. Mm-hmm. And so the old, your Bible is split up between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and we live in the, we new, are covenant, in the new Covenant, sure. right? And so the New Testament even informs us, this is an advantage we have, on how we ought to read the mm-hmm. Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- yeah. boy, there's beauty to be seen. Oh, well, yeah. And to go through all of that old material, Old Testament, the anticipation, I mean, you see it when Jesus is born. The people that know the yeah. Old Testament scriptures, they are like, we are seeing the realization of yep. what we've been hoping for. Yeah. And so it's part of the story. So our encouragement is to keep reading it. Keep reading keep it. keep trying to understand that context. Bible Project is a great resource. The cross references in your in your Bible are a great mm-hmm. resource as well. Read it's it in community. Continue to read. Yep. Read it together. Have conversations. Yeah. Amen. So good. Started off with Paul and the gospel yesterday, and seeing these identities that Paul uh, is called as a, as a servant of God, an apostle or a sent one, and he's separated to the gospel. You know, Mike was making the point. The other ties. Um, are cut and certainly we don't see ourselves as the apostle paul and yet Mm -hmm. those are all those are identities that all christians share to some degree we are all um, servants of of christ as our king you know sent ones uh and called to be um you know separated unto Mm -hmm. the gospel so let's offer some reflections there as you know that that's that's a good point for us to apply and kind of remember you know when people talk about understanding your identity in Christ like those are three dimensions of that I yeah. think and so if you if you know remembering your identity in Christ can be kind of an abstract theme for you you know these three give it some tangibility and so uh, what are some reflections that you guys would have from from any one of those from any one of those three as you think yeah, about it yeah i was just thinking about just sitting with each one of those and maybe reflecting on my life now of course i work for the church but even as I think back about being like, you know, a mom at home all day, or maybe just uh, maybe somebody who wears a lot of different hats, you know, what does it mean for me to be a servant of the king in this context? Mm -hmm. Like even renewing your mind when you wake up, Mm -hmm. okay, like I'm actually a servant, Mm -hmm. you know, or um, being sent, who are you sent to? You know, Mm -hmm. whether you stay home or you go somewhere else, you're being sent Mm -hmm. to a building, but who, are you sent to Mm -hmm. Um, even if you are homebound you um, have the opportunity to intercede for people to speak to people Mm -hmm. you know you can still be a sent one and then set apart for the gospel he was saying you know cut all of their ties so that makes me think of you know what am I looking to fill myself with or mm-hmm. get mm-hmm. fulfillment from. Be satisfied by. So yeah. it's like when I wake up in the morning and the children are with me, what am I looking to fill me? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, instead of having expectations of my own, filling myself with the thought that oh, I'm set apart for the gospel in this situation. So yeah. like the third one and the first one, you know. Like, if I'm not looking for them to fill me with something, I'm already filled with something, then I have the freedom to be a servant. Right, because then you can give it away, Mm. send it. There's at least a twofold objective in the New Testament for people who follow Jesus. I love that you just hit on this. Like, what about like homebodies or people who are in seasons where they they feel like they can't be as much of a sent servant? Mm -hmm. You know, is that not as important then right. as people who would work for the church or who are missionaries or are out there, you know, evangelizing at their workplace? The in the New Testament, as a follower of Jesus, God's will for us is that we grow in holiness and that we faithfully reflect Him. I think of Philippians chapter two: we're in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom we shine as lights in the world. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, even 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, we're, uh, we're ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation for the kingdom of Jesus. And so, but what you just mentioned is so, is so cool because 
so, you know, seasonally, you might be in situations in your life where you can really put an emphasis on being this external, outward servant and sent one. Um, and then there's periods of like where actually you don't have the ability to do that and you have maybe the ability to become more like, man, I'm, I'm gonna kill sin. I'm gonna intercede for other people. I'm gonna commit my life to like prayer and mm-hmm. I'm going to seek t- to become more acquainted with the scriptures and like these types of things. And so don't pigeonhole e- either one of those things, I think is the mm-hmm. encouragement and recognize that they're both beautiful and requirements and they're in the identity. In fact, I actually love, um, I did love, I don't know that Mike even intended to do this. I, I, I could ask him the question. There was a sweet bookend to his sermon because he ended with the encouragement that we belong mm-hmm. to Christ Jesus. Right. And he kind of identifies that belonging in the first part. It, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the Western church. We're part of the Western church, and so there's some beautiful things about it, and there are some, a lot of opportunities to grow as well. One of the opportunities to grow in the Western church is that we, we can romanticize Jesus and, like, our relationship with him. Mm-hmm. So it's like you hear, I belong to Jesus, and it's just kind of like, you know, even in a lot of the songs that the church sings today, it's like right. me and Jesus, and you're almost mm-hmm. like, you know, I want to feel you give me a hug, and isn't this awesome that he loves me? And like, and it's like, okay, yes, awesome, mm-hmm. wonderful, beautiful. Um, but the, the belonging also comes with a huge responsibility and stewardship, mm-hmm. and he identified the, or he uh, defined the belonging in the first part. Paul was a servant. So there's honor and humility. He's he's a bond servant. He's a slave to Jesus. He's stewarding all that God has entrusted to him. Mm-hmm. He's sent out, and everything in his life that is alien was that was the uh, was part of the quote that is alien to the gospel needs to be cut off. Mm-hmm. And that's not as romantic yeah. right. as I belong to Jesus and He loves me. Isn't that great? Yeah, uh, which is great. And so yeah, I just love that. That was a good insight, Lindsay. Well, and that belong to Jesus, right? There's sort of two sides of that, I would think, where there is that comfort piece that you belong to him. And then also being in Christ, we, you know, we represent him and we can like go out and still recognize that we're safe even when we, and we go out, we represent him, even in some of these contexts, go out to those who we are sent to go out, you know, be able to sever those other ties. And so um, you know, that confidence to go out is, is piece of that, that we can do that because we belong to him. Mm-hmm. All comedy is kind of offensive, so forgive me for a second. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I saw this, like, I saw this video, I, it might have been yesterday, I don't know, where this guy is like, he's a son, you know, he's probably in his mid-20s and he's joking, like, oh, mom, look at this thing that, <laughs> what it says, the coffee mug, <laughs> and she goes... Have you applied for any jobs today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. The, the reason I thought about that is because, um, you know, even when I think about my kids, mm-hmm. right? So they're in a season right now where I want them to know how loved they are, and they're in my home, and I need them to learn and to grow and like learn the ways of what it means to be, you know, a faithful man and woman mm-hmm. under King Jesus in this world. I'm not sending out my six-year-old and my, my four-year-old, you know what I mean? Right. But, you know, there there are conversations when all of a sudden your your 25-year-old is like, you know, still living at mom and dad's and, you know, everybody's kind of like, is this, you know, are you going to go and, yeah. and do it? Now it's time for your belonging, actually. And, and right. some of the joy that the father and the mother has for their children mm-hmm. is when they actually then go and do it. And it brings in this new dimension of belonging and love and joy and, and pride and all that type of stuff. And so there is a right. sense in which g- we will experience part of the beauty of our identity in Christ Jesus mm-hmm. when we actually do then go and steward that and we're living a scent, uh, a scent lifestyle and we're separated from all things that are alien to the gospel. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. On the believing obedience part of that, uh, at the end there, and Mike made the point, obedience always involves faith and faith always involves obedience and uh, trying to avoid that, you know, quote unquote, easy believism. And so uh, maybe just a couple of comments there, you know, believing, you know, he also made the point, believing in Jesus as your risen savior and then also following him as your authority, as mm-hmm. your king. And so, 
you know, we, we can always tend to kind of separate those two for whatever reason, just a really helpful reminder that, you know, that if I am believing in Jesus as my Savior, then I am um, not just there to have my quote unquote sins forgiven so I can like have insurance for the future, but but do I want Jesus as my king? You know, do I really recognize that this is the way for me to live, that I, you know, acknowledge that I am, as I'm following Jesus, I am living according to a new kingdom, submitting to a new king, and that's where the good news is is embedded mm-hmm. as well. And so obedience and faith, faith and obedience, uh, talking about that connection a bit. Yeah, this is going to be a reoccurring theme, too, in mm-hmm. the next several weeks. Um and so even, you know, in the coming verses that we'll talk about this coming Sunday, he talks about being mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Mm-hmm. And then Romans chapter 1, when you get into verse 16 and 17, which are, are you know, kind of famous verses in Christendom, he says in verse 17, um, you know, in, the, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith, faith. for faith. Mm-hmm. And so there's e- even this concept of like grace that we've received, grace that we're living in, future grace that's yet to come, and how that supplies the power for us to actually live in repentance, which that's what we're talking about here too, a lifestyle of repentance, not just like, the, you know, we think of repentance sometimes as like confessing your sins like this one-time act. We've, we've, we've pushed against that a lot here in Sermon Plus at different gatherings on, on Sunday, but repentance is a lifestyle and he's going to get into that in the beginning of Romans chapter 2 as well. God's kindness is meant to lead us to repentance. And so th- this whole uh, obedience and faith conversation and grace and future grace and repentance is going to be a live discussion basically through the end of chapter 2. Mm-hmm. It'll be a reoccurring theme. Yep. yep. So this also kind of the whole believing obedience thing gets us out of the viewpoint of, um, you know, you're on – it's kind of like the theory of the atonement. It's like I got – my sins are forgiven and now I'm good and I'm mm-hmm. going to get to heaven when I die. Right. But the whole believing obedience thing is like, well, really salvation is more holistic than that. It's like changing you. Mm-hmm. And so then it's just like my faith in King Jesus and my calling, my being sent, my separatedness, all that stuff mm-hmm. is all part of salvation rather than just having my sins forgiven and then being like, you know mm-hmm. – all right, I'm going to wait till I die now because I'm going to go to heaven. It's like, oh, it's like a whole thing where I'm now being changed um, for my good and for the good of the people around me. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah, even what, are, what do we mean when we say, like, do you believe? Right. Are you a right. believer? We're not just saying, do you believe that Jesus was God, died on the cross for your sins, rose again from the third day, has come back to judge the living and the dead, you know, and, and you're going to live forever if you have been forgiven. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, the what Paul is always comprehensively saying is, do you believe like the story, right. the words of God? And so, right there, for the easy believism is, well, I'm going to believe enough that gets me the benefits of Christianity without any of the responsibility. Right. And well, th- and that's going to be a huge thing that he pushes against in Romans chapter one and Romans chapter two. I mean, that that's it. It's like people mm-hmm. are like, oh, I want to live forever. Right. I want to be forgiven. Um, but do you believe the rest of Scripture that's like, uh, meaning this, do you mm-hmm. trust well, that's in the, the commands and promises of God mm-hmm. that following his ways is actually Psalm 119 verses 1 and 2, the pathway to happiness right, and joy exactly. and peace? Right. Well, that and that's the word, bringing in the synonym word, trust, clears up a lot for us. It's right. like, exactly. I don't, you know. Well, sure, I believe this. Definitely. Can even be said like that. But, you know, when it comes down to it, is this what I trust? You know, so you go to like the parable of soils, you know, the plant sprouts up real fast and is choked out. Like, you know, that's like an acknowledgement, but Mm -hmm. not a trust. Right. You know, and so even to just go back and say, well, what do I even mean by this word faith? I think clears up a lot of that right there. And with my kids, it's like, do they they have to trust me? How many kids do you have again? Uh, four. Okay. <laughs> they have to trust me when I say you can't just watch TV all day. Mm-hmm. It's like they think that's good for them. Right. It's like right. they might believe it and be like, I don't really care. I don't really trust you. I, I would rather do it. Mm-hmm. But it's like 
if they just watch TV all day, they'd be miserable. Yeah. And it's well. like, but if they go outside and play, which is what I want them to do, and I want them to trust me that, oh, that is actually better, mm -hmm. then they feel better about it. So, like, if that's, right. like, the whole right. deal. Or the whole, They're like. with you. Yeah. Exactly. They're with you. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, Arlo could be like, yeah, I believe that you think that that's right. what's best for me. Exactly. <laughs> but I know better. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, and and that, not that trusting is, me. That yeah. is our approach, too. It's like, you know, I believe that God thinks that this is what's best. Right. 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 Um, but it may not be what I think is best. Right? Yeah. it's Mike said, the gospel is about who before it's about what. Mm -hmm. So great. I feel like anytime we start focusing on the what, my sins, going to heaven, yeah. watch TV. That's right. really good. And we're not looking at who, because like the beauty of Christ, right. like being captivated by who God is, yeah. is the thing that, Gives me in. assurance that whatever he's telling me is good. Right. So, like, if I'm just focused on what, then, yeah, I can go off on all kinds of weird paths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're not, you know, we're not affirming a list of standards or, right. or you know, obeying a list of commands. We're following a king. Yes. <laughs> you know, we right. are following King Jesus. Trusting that it's a better way to live. Mm -hmm. And that's what he said. He said, you know, the go Mike said, the gospel is not only information. This was another mm -hmm. quote, or it's not mere information was mm -hmm. the quote. It's a summons. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, you know, to, to use the old hymn, it beckons us to come and die. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that is the way of fault. You're dying to yourself. You're trusting in Jesus and his ways, and then you're following him. And that is a continual daily battle and trust, you know? So it's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's not, it's not even like, well, I made a profession of faith when I was seven years old, and that profession of faith is enough to carry me all the way home. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, the the preservation of the saints, I love that, not just the perseverance of the saints, but the preservation, like mm -hmm. God's grace is enough to sustain us. Mm -hmm. But there is a daily, I mean, that's what it says. It, that's what, literally what Jesus says. If anyone wants to follow me, they must daily take up their cross, deny mm -hmm. themselves, and follow me. And so, yeah, it's a daily trust, a daily trust. And we'll keep coming up to this in the, in the coming mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm.